Okay. Uh, whenever you're ready, Jim. Whatever. I'm just ready. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Today we are interviewing Sergeant Major Lawrence M. Pinto. The interviewer is Joseph Gambino. The cameraman is Dan Macaron. The date of this is September 17, 2003. Mr. Pinto, what branches of service were you in? I was in the Marine Corps, Joe, United States Marine Corps. Uh, when did you enter the Marine Corps? I entered the Marine Corps back in March 10, 1943. Uh, were you drafted or did you volunteer? No, I was 17 at the time. I enlisted. Do you find anything special over enlisting than drafting? Yes, you have your choice. At that time, you have your choice of the service you wanted when you enlisted. If not, if you waited until you were drafted, uh, you could have uh, been put into the Marines, Navy, Army, Coast Guard, whatever, whatever it was need at that particular time. What did you? Uh, what interested you in the U.S. Marine Corps? What interests me? Oh, mm -hmm. that's a good. That's a good point. Uh, it was back in in uh, the middle '30s. There was a, uh, a young man next to me, lived next door to me, uh, who was at that time attending Newburgh High School. And when he graduated, uh, he went off to uh, join the Marines in the middle of the 30s. And he was in there. At that time, Marine Corps was six months, I think. I'm pretty sure it was six months. And he was having a hard time. But anyway, he stayed, and he did come home with a group of Marines off of one of the uh, cruises that had pulled into New York. And he looked like a million dollars. The three of them were dressed in their blues, and I fell in love with the Marine Corps at that point. That was in the middle 30s. And then, as we went on, this fall I'm talking about, uh, stayed in the Marine Corps, uh, went all the way, became a, a full colonel, and retired as a full colonel for the United States Marine Corps. What wars, theaters, campaigns, or locations were you in? Okay, I was in the Pacific campaign, Pacific area, they call it Pacific Theater. Okay. In campaigns, I was in the Saipan, was in June of 1944, and then back to Hawaii for reorganization, and then on to Iwo Jima on February 19th, 1945, returned to Saipan, reorganized, and was on the invasion of Okinawa on April 1st, 1945. What were your general's duties, skills, or ratings? Okay. In, uh, at the beginning, uh, I worked out, I went, they sent me to school and trained me for a, an aircraft gunner, okay, which consisted I had to learn how to be a, a radio operator, both voice and code. Uh, they sent me to Texas A&M College for that, and then when we got back to Cherry Point, North Carolina, uh, we were organized into a unit that was to support divisions, like with a uh, radar system. We were the eyes of the division, and on a site pan, that's exactly what we did. We stayed with division headquarters, and we gave them the notice when their aircraft were coming in, bombing that night. Okay. After that, we were reorganized, and we became, we went into what they call the landing force air support control unit. This unit was made up of officers who were pilots and enlisted people like myself. And what we did, we controlled the airstrikes from the land with the units. We were attached, we attached to the divisions and we would support them in air fire. Just like artillery, we used airplanes. That was it. And that continued on for Iwo Jima and then we reorganized and went on to do the same thing in uh, Okinawa. Did you have any combat service? All three. All three services, Joe. It was Saipan was combat, Iwo Jima was combat, Okinawa was combat, and it was all uh, first landings, first day, if you would call it that way. Were you any at any time under fire? Absolutely. Every time. All day. Every, every minute we were on the island, we were in the fight. What were your feelings as you were in this war, in this combat? We thought that, that see Joe, at that time we were only 19, 18, 19 years old. Nobody could kill us. We just kept going, right? We saw a lot of death, and, but we didn't think we were going to get it. Some of us got it, some of us didn't. That's something we'll never be able to figure out. 
What was your daily life consisting of? Well, where in combat you want to put it, Joe, or do you want to put it to the beginning? Uh, you start from the beginning. You want, back and, and you want to give a little bit of uh, background on? Uh, okay. Okay. This would be good for the good for the archives. When we listed when we listed in the Marine Corps, we had to go down to New York City, and we had to go down to I think it was Church Street, where we took a physical. And the physical consisted of whatever they do to get you in, okay? I almost didn't make it because the fact that I found out at the end of the physical I had flat feet. Third degree flat feet, okay? But with the doctors looking at it and everything else, I finally made it. But then we made it down to Paris Island. We picked up from New York, going down, we picked up a contingent of fellows from uh, Philadelphia, and I think also Baltimore, and that comprised us of our platoon when we got down there. And it was, very, it was very discouraging because when we got off the train, there was, a, there was a DI standing out there with his smoky stove hat and his raincoat, and we're standing in the pouring rain, and he's giving us a lecture of how good we are, how, you know, how proud we should be to be coming in and joining this unit and this organization. And we got in there. We were treated like uh, cattle. Until we got in, and then we, from that point on, it became uh, very hard training for the eight weeks that we were there. And that's all we got out of boot camp, eight weeks and on our way to the next plateau. They didn't have time to give us any more than that. But very interesting. Then, they, as I said, they sent me to school. They sent me down to Texas a which was a great duty, a great duty place. I loved the college. Uh, matter of fact, they even let us uh, go out for the football team. Uh, but the, uh, I think the association down there changed that quick. <laughs> but we had that. We back, and then I started, and we took off for uh, San Diego, and then uh, we were put on the, the aircraft carrier, a WASP, that sent us over to Hawaii. Now, when we arrived in Hawaii, I hope you fellas study geography well, because I always thought Hawaii was flat. And I was amazed to see the mountains in Hawaii. I thought they were just black a lot of mountains. So we worked there, and that's, that's how we started. From that point, was, that was our uh, that was our home base, Joe. We stayed in Hawaii. We made the operation of Saipan. We brought prisoners back from Saipan. And then from that point on, we reorganized and went to Iwo, right from Hawaii. And then from Iwo, we went back to Saipan. Because now Saipan was, well, it was, it was supposed to be safe, but there was still some fire. There was still some... Japs that didn't think that the, the war was over. And from there, we went and we made the invasion of Okinawa on Easter Sunday, 1945. Finished that, come back to uh, Hawaii, and while we were in Hawaii, we heard that the war was going to end within the next four or five days, and we didn't believe it. But what happened, Joe, was that they dropped the, they dropped the atomic bomb. And that started the whole process of the war being that covers the whole thing. Is that an hour? <laughs> what were your reactions to the um, using the atomic bomb? Uh, that didn't have any reaction, I mean, because we didn't know what the heck it was, really. We, we had no idea what it was, really. Uh, that only came later on when we found out how bad it was. But all we knew was the war was over. That was it. That's all we cared about. And uh, we were on our way home. We uh, took off and uh, Headed back for San Francisco. We were two days out of San Francisco when the Japanese surrendered. There was such a celebration in San Francisco that when we arrived in San Francisco, they wouldn't let us in San Francisco. They kept us on a little island called Treasure Island, which is right underneath the bridge between San Francisco and Oakland. Okay? We were stuck on there. We wouldn't couldn't get off. Put us on a train, sent us down to San Diego. Wouldn't even let us off the train. Then we got down there, they separated us, and some fellows came to the East Coast and some fellows from the West Coast. I was lucky to have to stay on the West Coast. I mean, I paid my way home and back. But I was stationed, they put me in a place called El Centro, California. El Centro, okay? It's right on the border, almost on the border. It's about 30 miles, if I'm not mistaken, 30 miles from Mexicali, which is on the Mexican side, right? And I was there for ooh, about eight months. And uh, what we, uh, what we started.
stayed there. We, we kept going and we did a lot of things. I wound up organizing a band and we played in the uh, nightclub at night. It worked out very nice. Okay. Then we all hitchhiked. I hitchhiked home in December 1945. That was it. Left the Marine Corps in 19, the, the December 1945. And after that, 19, a couple of years passed over, 1949, uh, I joined the uh, Army Reserve. How would you say your equipment fared during the war? Very good. Equipment was very good. Compared to today, it's not as good. But then it was fine. It was okay. Compared to the enemies, how would you say it was? Oh, we were quite fine. We were superior. Sure. It took us a little time, Joe, to get there. I was fortunate enough to be in that area where we got the good stuff. Prior to that, we go back to Guadalcanal, Wake Island. We didn't have we didn't have the equipment. We weren't ready. Matter of fact, we didn't even have a navy. What was left it was, it was pretty well smashed out, you know. If it wasn't for the aircraft carriers, yeah. And Wake Island was the saver that saved us in the in that large Pacific. If we hadn't if they had taken Wake Island, I think we'd have been in trouble. We might have been talking Japanese today. Very possible. What was your unit or ship? The unit was what I told you, the Landing Force, Landing Force Air Support Control Unit, United States Marine Corps. How did you feel with your officers? Very well. Very good. Got along very, very well. Was there any regular discussions with them daily? Oh yeah, oh sure. Matter of fact, uh, in there's a good there's a good side uh, side shot. Uh, we were in San Diego, we we're getting ready to move out. One of the officers we had, a lieutenant, was a pitcher for the uh, Philadelphia Phillies, okay? And we were playing, we choose up amongst our side, we're playing a game, and he's pitching, and he was pitching very hot, and he threw me a nice, you know, pull, I hit the darn thing, and it went out of the center field, his head hit the parade ground, and rolled for miles, and I ran all around for a home run, and I'm jumping up and down and saying, I hit a home run off a major league ball player. Ha, 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 what a deal, right? <laughs> I got up the next time, didn't see the ball. He sunk me. <laughs> those are the side. Those are the good times. That's the good thing. Uh, another good thing we did, believe it or not, uh, Joe, uh, after we made the invasion on Okinawa, the Marine Corps was to. You got the map there? It's a, it's a map there. I'll give you a map of uh, Okinawa. What are you doing? Okay. Just so you, you see where we landed in the center, Joe? Yeah, put that on the tape, yeah. Point, point to the center of the island, okay? We came in there, we all came in, the Army, Marines, we all landed there, and then we went north. You see the north portion? That was up in the mountain area. We were supposed to hold up there, but what we did, the Marines moved so damn fast that they, we secured that no time. Now we had to move south, and there's a, there's a, uh, a city of Naha, that's where we had to hit. We had uh, the Marine divisions uh, right across with the Army divisions fighting south. In that little bit of break that we had before we went south, we put on a minstrel show. How's that sound? Can you explain that? We put, yeah, we put, we got stuff together, we made black face, we, we put on uh, all kinds of things, and, and we had a little show for the guys for about uh, one day, and, and we broke it up and moved down south. But it was a little break in the action. You see, it's not all fighting all the time. And then we had to go through uh, rain, Tremendous amount of rain that bogged down vehicles. You couldn't walk in the mud. It was so deep and so thick. You couldn't get your you couldn't get your vehicles going so bad. That lasted for a couple of days. After we left Okinawa, uh, we had a tremendous we, we were a part of we were out of the area. Typhoon. And this typhoon tore the place apart. We lost a lot of ships. And that's another thing we, we, we had to witness. We had to witness an awful lot of Navy ships going down and being hit by kamikaze airplanes. You guys know what kamikazes are? They give, these, they, they give these instructions to these fellas and tell them to fly the plane, but they don't tell them how to land. All they do is tell them is how to crash it into a ship. And we lost an awful lot of sailors, Navy guys, over a period of fighting. It was terrible. I hate to say this, fellas, but if we had to go to Japan, uh, I swear we would, would have lost a million men. Easy. I wouldn't have been sitting. If that was the case, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. I'll tell you that right now. It would have never happened. 
never happened. So anybody that says, should we have dropped the atomic bomb, I said, well, as far as I'm concerned, yes, because I, I wouldn't be telling you. I wouldn't be sitting here telling you anything. They had it. Okay. Terrible choice. Which can now? What's next day? We're running out of time. How would you celebrate the holidays while you were at war? That's good. The best way we could. Uh, the best way we could. If we were on the islands, we'd try to, you know, if it's Christmas time, we'd try to put trees together and try to make everything thing. You see what it was? It was now, and if, I think they've made a couple of movies called The Brothers, The Brotherhood or Brothers. That's exactly what it is. You're so close to the guys. You're so close to your, your, your guys. You, you, it's, it's, you just roll with the, the guys in India. That's why we're so close to them. We're that close. We're a band of brothers. That's what it amounts to. It's a, it's a whole thing. Uh, I wouldn't want anybody to go through it, but it was the experience was fantastic. It was really fantastic. But we had Joe. We had we had to do something. We were told we had two people, three people: Mussolini, Adolf Hitler, and Pojo. They were trying to take over our country, this country, this country. They were trying to take this country away from us. And they would do anything they possibly could to get it. And we didn't want it to take it. And we stood tall and said, not going to take it. We were like, we were just like you guys. We were all in school. And then all of a sudden, this thing happened. And we all had to leave. Matter of fact, I was here. I was here in this school in 1941. I was a student. And I had just gone up to, uh, with a friend of mine, another friend of mine, who was in school here, was, we had gone up to see Sister Bernadette up at St. Dominic's in Oyster Bay that Sunday. And then coming back, we, we received the news that the Japanese had attacked Pearl Harbor and destroyed uh, three quarters of our fleet. And then you know, we came to school, and we were all sitting right here in Shamanot, all thinking, what's going to happen next? And then, of course, a lot of fellows that had graduated from school were uh, already in the Army, and uh, they had a lot of heroes, too. Well, you know, you know from the mass from last year. Yeah, you haven't witnessed it yet, right? You haven't seen our, our gold star mass yet. Okay. Uh, and this young man down here is. Uh, Senior. Uh, Michael Morris. Michael? What grade are you, Mike? Senior. Oh, senior? Yes. Well, you've gone through two, two or three masses, right? Yeah. Okay, sure. great. Okay. What do you think of it? Uh, very moving. Okay. Do you. Um, how would you contact your families during the holidays? Would you write letters? No, we had, no, the only, the, only, the only communication we had uh, was, uh, e uh, what do you call it? No, it was an email. It was, um, didn't forget it. It was a small, it was a small piece of paper about me. I don't know what they call it. Uh, it was, and we could write, it was very small and we could write it, but it had to be uh, examined. Or it the offices in our unit, but read the letters, which wasn't the, yeah, I think back now that wasn't the greatest ideas. I mean, somebody else in another unit, maybe, was reading the letters, didn't know us from Adam, but our own officers were reading our mail. Not so bad with us, because the officers, and we, we got along very well, but when you do it in another unit, you know, an infantry unit, something like that, the officers, and then he cut, he would cut out what he thought was, uh, you know, it could be used. So by the time the Pam family got the, the little piece of uh, mail, it was about that big. It had whole holes in it. So they had to read, try to figure out what was in it. But I had, a, I had a key with my dad. I used to tell him that, uh, okay, dad, I, I, things are popping, and uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, I, I can't write to you for a while. And that would key him into uh, the next, as soon as, you know, as soon as we hit an island, as soon as we made an invasion, he knew exactly where I was. And that's it. And when I came home, he showed me a picture of, uh, remember the journal? The journal, well, you guys remember it, the New York Journal. The picture was this big, of Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima, right? The flag came in later. That's five days later. That was a spectacle. We had fought for five days, five solid days, on an island. We couldn't get on that island. We were having trouble getting on it because of the the uh, black ash that uh, was supposedly sand, but it wasn't sand, it had no bottom to it, it was volcano ash and sulfur burning just coming out of the ground, okay? So your vehicles would sink into that sand 
and you couldn't get the, you couldn't, you had to get the toad out, really. You try to walk in it, it was like walking in, let me put it there, we try, try to walk in a silo of wheat. You can't do it. Or you try to dig a hole in the silo of wheat, what's going to happen? The more you push it aside, the more wheat comes down into the hole. So that was tough there. And then this mountain sitting on the side, loaded with four to five hundred Japanese firing at us, constantly. Until one day it stopped. The fifth day, for some reason, we didn't get any more firing from that. Battle was still going on off to our left. It's quiet. So we sent a group of guys up there. They climbed up the side of that mountain because there's no roads, no trails. And it, we didn't know if they were going to make it or not. It took them about three quarters of an hour to get up there. And when they got up there, naturally, they could see, now they could see the island. Boy, they had a panoramic view of the island. Now they know what the Japanese had, what they were doing to us for the last five days. And then eventually they had that flag. Guys, when that flag went up, I tell you, it was the greatest thing. It was only five minutes, only the last five minutes. Then they all the ships out in the water. They were blowing the horns, they were blowing the beat, and everybody was yelling, screaming, and yelling. It was like, uh, you know, it was like we kicked the field goal, right? We won the ball game. But the fight, the fight hadn't stopped. Sad part of it is, six guys in that picture. Five were Marines, and one was a Navy corpsman. Got to patch this up. Later on, three of the Marines in that picture, as you see, was killed, was killed on the island later on going up the, towards the north. So they never did see the picture. They didn't even realize what happened. The other three came back. Uh, back here to the States, and they did some bond storming, and uh, you know, they're all gone now. They're, those three guys are gone. One was an Indian by the name of Hayes. Uh, it, was a tough, it was a tough battle. We made it. Okay. Where we stand now, Joe? Um, it says you left the corpse in 1945. What did you do then? Say that again, Joe. You left the Corps in 1945. Oh, okay. What occurred after that? Well, I did a little schooling, okay, and then I got married. I had some kids, played a little football, which I did, I loved. I played a little uh, semi pro ball. And then somebody talked me into joining the uh, National Guard at that time. There was the National Guard, the military police. And I stayed with the, uh, well, I switched from the Guard, National Guard, over to the Reserves. I stayed with the Reserves for. Uh, a total of years of service came to 38 years. They retired in 1985 as a command sergeant major. And now I'm on a pension. Did you receive any decorations, medals, or commendations for your services? We received the, uh, we received the uh, Congressional uh, Presidential Unit Citation on the island of Saipan. Uh, the other, the other air, awards were the Asiatic Pacific uh, Medal, and of course the American uh, uh, War Medal, Theater Medal. And then uh, I was recommended for uh, the Navy uh, Navy Unit Citation uh, for what work I did on Okinawa. And then later on, I received the in uh, reserves, the Army Reserves. I received the Army Commendation, and I received the. Uh, Meritorious service. With them. What person do you remember best from your service, and why? What I remember the best. That's a good question. There's so many good things. So. There's so many wonderful things. Uh, great with the guys. Had good times. Uh, a lot of laughs. Had a lot of sadness. But uh, I think. Uh, I think, I think our time in Hawaii was, I think, one of the best uh, times we all got together. It was, it was a, and I still go back there, Joe. I still go back to Hawaii because I always felt that Hawaii was the, was the stopper of the Japanese onslaught. Even though they hit us, that was the, that was the place to stop them, and we stopped them from getting to Hawaii. And it was a big thing. It's, it's, it's very enjoyable. When Did I'm you? Saying, I'm not going to <laughs> Did you perform any unusual service or duties during your time? No, I don't think so. No. no. Did you ever have to when you finally retired, you settled down with your family? Yeah. Go to Omni. Sure. Hey, gonna get here we go, right? Okay, I had six kids. 
three boys, three girls. I now stand on the threshold, 14 grandchildren. One graduated from this school. And three great granddaughters. How's that? Is that covered? And we married 56 years. 55, 56 years. Do you still contact your war buddies? Same, the same girl. Do you still contact your war, bur war buddies today? I did, and most of them are gone. They're gone. Now I've created a new uh, group. Uh, I am, uh, right now, I am a member of the uh, First Marine Division Association. It's all First Marine Division. Uh, we do, uh, right now, we work with the Marines over at Garden City and Stewart Avenue. Uh, we help them out on a civilian basis, uh, anything they can't do. Uh, as the colonel puts it, he calls us uh, the Marine Extension, and that's what we do. We, if we, there's some way we can help them out in the uh, lawyers or anything that we can help the young people out. We give them, we, we give a picnic for them every year over at the park. We do a Christmas party for all their kids uh, every year. So we're pretty active. We're still, I'm still pretty active with the... Uh, with the Marine Corps. The Army? No. I left. Should I tell them about the, uh, the State Guard? Sure. <laughs> the, the, Mr. Pure and Art for one I believe that. Avenger of Evans, we got for that. <laughs> Were you ever injured or captured during your experience? No. 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 Talk to some people at Wado. Close friends? Yeah. Uh, it was uh, it was my son-in-law's uncle, who was uh, 1939, uh, was drafted into the army, uh, trained, and sent to the Philippines, captured on Coagador, and he was on the death march. And survived. It was a horror. It was a horror what they did to the stories he told me of what they did to our troops, to our guys. It was a horror. And they didn't feed them. They didn't give them medical treatment. And it was a disaster. Did you feel any aversion toward the enemy? Now? Sure. Now and back then? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I have no love for the Japanese. I can't. I just, uh, for what they did, I saw what they did. But then again, it's a, it's, a, it's a new group. I know we've gone back. I know the Marines have gone back. They've gone back to the Jew. And they've had these uh, uh, sessions with some of the Japanese soldiers that did survive, which was many of them. And they do meet. They met twice, I think, so far. But I don't think I would do that. I don't think I would do that. Well, thank you, Sergeant Major Lawrence Pinto, for sharing your war experience with us. Thanks very much. Let's, let's see what comes out on the table. Okay, I want to, want to show you here, uh, this is the picture. This is the, the fellows after they put up the first flag on Iwo Jima. This is the top of Mount Suribachi. And you can see what they had to climb up, all this, this stuff in here. And over here, uh, this part here is where you see them going up with the flag on the side. The guys, okay? Over here, this is when the flag went up and they were just, you, you'll see, you see a Marine here guarding this area because they weren't too sure. But after the flag had gone up, and then the, the uh, battle was over, we lost three of the f original flag raisers, and I'll show you on this side of the picture here. They, in this picture here, there were six, six, uh, six men, five Marines and one, you can't see six, but there's six in here, and uh, the one corpsman. And eventually, after it went up, the three fellows that didn't, didn't survive. But here's two pictures of uh, two of the men that did come back later on. They brought them back, and this is Ira Hayes, and I think this uh, fella down here is one of the uh, fella from uh, Rene Gordon. He was one of the one. There's third guy is missing in here. That was the corpsman. And uh, then they came back. Okay. Now there's there's a picture here of the uh, Lieutenant Colonel Chandler Johnson sitting on the side of the here. This is Sarabachi going up. 
and uh, they were they were part of the whole setup of getting that flag up there. And over here is where you can see the actual landings where they took place. Sir Bocce is here, and over here the landings of the Green Beach, the Blue Beach, the Red Beach, all along here we made these landings. But what we were getting was fire from this mountain, which was 500 and some odd feet, and all they were doing was raking us up and down, up and down the beach here, making it very difficult to dig it on the beach and destroying the equipment as it come in. And you can see at this shot here, if you take it, you can see how we were pinned down, pinned down on the beach, trying to get up these little knolls up here, which was that soft coral sand. And that was it. That was it. mostly how we got across. Here is a copy of the, uh, I'll put it with the picture on so you can see the whole two things. Here, can you get a, this is the, uh, this is the units that were on the, uh, the island that took part in the island. You can see it being breaking down the, the 5th Amphibious Corps with the units in the 5th, and here's our unit here, Air Support Control Unit. That was the unit I was a part of. And then, of course, your 3rd Marine Division, your 4th Marine Division, your 5th Marine Division, and your CBs, who were the, the guys that built the road up to Sarabachi later on. We have reunions every year, and this here is 1998. We took a picture of, of these are all survivors. All these men were on Iwo Jima, and we do this every year. We also put a, a nice picture of a this monument here of the flag raising that right now is at the uh, Marine uh, First Marine District Recruiting Station over in Garden City, and they hold this for us. This is the Colonel in charge and the Sergeant Major, and these all these men, myself, were all former Marines and also all former Marines that fought on Iwo Jima. 4th and 5th Division. And that's a picture story of Iwo Jima.